Hello and welcome to the Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem podcast. I'm Silver still, and still in the other host position is... She must have forgot her line. <laughs> Chaotic. Apparently the window I was clicked into does not let me press my push to talk about anything. That seemed to be the case. You kept making faces and like yes. you were trying to say something, but it's fine. I don't need it. I don't need it. The cat must have got your tongue or the window. But yeah, well, I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode number thirteen is going to be about the v- v- the Wolpentinger or Volpentinger. It's a W O L P E R T I N G E R. Wolpentinger is how I'm going to be pronouncing it. Whether I am right or wrong, just let us know in reviews or the Discord. Yes. It is from Germany, as it sounds. It is usually found inhabiting the alpine forest of southern Germany in. Barbaria and sorry, I mispronounced this. Baden Wurttemberg. Oh, it sounded like I was close in my head. So, in my head, have you heard of this creature? Chaotic. I have not. It is very. I think it's not really well known. There is what they say no two of them look alike. But the main Ooh. the main one that's depicted is usually a small animal. It's made up of varying different creatures. So it's got the rabbit head, body of a squirrel, antlers of a stag, wings of a pheasant. Okay. Like, I'm following, but I'm having a hard time picturing. Like, I, I know. But that's the most commonly depicted one. But since more than no two of them really look alike, Wolpentinger can be any combination of any creatures. Let's see. Some of them say that they're fox bodied, uh, badger headed, duck feet, lizard tail. That could be a Wolpentinger. Some say that I've seen that the Wolpentanger is a result of a magical power from when animals die in the same place. They just kind of fuse together. Something brings all the body parts and the body parts come together and make them. Mm-hmm. And some say that it is a Romantic, a result of a romantic relationship between a hare and a roebuck. Kind of like a deer. Okay. Not sure how that would really work. Figure somebody's fan fiction would figure that out. Interesting. Yeah, fan fiction like crazy, but all right. Is said to be personality wise, it is said to be shy, frugal, and feast on herbs and roots found only in the Bavarian Alpine forest, as well as occasional insects. This is the little one, the rabbit mm-hmm. one. It's not dangerous to humans, but if its saliva touches your skin, thick tufts of hair will start to sprout. Possibly a problem solver for bald people. I mean, it sounds like a crazy good implant option. Yes or no? Yeah, that would be a very good... How would you collect the spittle of a rabbit, though? I guess you just kind of... If you can capture it, you might be able to harvest its spit saliva. Everybody will have thick, luxurious hair. If it feels threatened... It will spray a foul-smelling liquid onto its attacker. Kind of like a skunk. A bestial smell 
that cannot be removed or covered with soap, deodorant, or perfume until it magically disappears exactly seven years later. I, this is a very specific kind of creature. He is, uh, this one's kind of out there. There's a list of its powers that I found, too. That's kind of, yeah. Okay, so its powers are as followed from what I've seen in different resources. It can fly with its wings. No matter what its body size is, it will always be able to fly. It has enhanced agility, enhanced hearing, enhanced speed, which I would think speed would be agility, but I guess it's not really... You can go 90 miles an hour, but making a 90 mile turn 90 degrees would be agility, I guess. Enhanced jumping, enhanced swimming, enhanced tunneling. It is immortal. It cannot die of old age. Oh my god. Immune to poison. Toxins and disease. Immune to all forms of magic. Uh, separation immunity. Immune to all forms of bodily separation, including molecular, since they lack molecules. And are instead, their entire body is the thing that holds everything, including mo molecules, together. Unfortunately, this means the Wolfentinger cannot teleport and hits portals like a brick wall. This creature is like zero to a hundred. Like there's absolutely no middle ground. It's zero to a hundred or a thousand even. Yeah. It's like the nicest creature, but it's just unkillable. There's two more abilities. Life force removal Im immunity. Immune to soul, spirit, life force, power, brain, mind being extracted. Due to them lacking in all except brain and mind. Which are actually fused to their skull, which is then fused to their muscles, which is then fused to their skin. The mind cannot be removed due to their mind being completely attached to the brain. The look of disbelief. I'm just broken. Like, this creature is like a god. And we're just... It's nice. We're just vibing with it. Like, okay. It also has a venom... Could it's a bite. It's venomous. And uh, has enough venom to deal with all of its predators. But it won't bite us, so like it is dangerous, technically. Yes. But it won't hurt us. Maybe as eh, much as a rabbit that would shrug's hurt. That not, that shrug's not, that wasn't convincing. That wasn't. I mean, it'll probably spray you with the magical seven-year lasting foul smell first. No tomato juice for that. No. Some of the other Wolpentangers that are said to be in the same family, possibly, are the American Jackalope, the Australian Rurocko, and the Swedish Skavrader resemble the Wolpentanger. Do you feel like you want to catch one of these? Yes. I'm going to be honest with you. Yes. Okay. Anyone wishing to see a Wolpentinger alive in its natural habitat must enter the barbarian forest in the company of an attractive single woman during a full moon, and if she is accompanied by the right man, the Wolpentinger will show itself. This is very, like, I feel like we've got a very specific creature, and the way to see it is very not specific. Like, it's just like, you can bring a male and a female, but... Mm, it might work, it might not. Like, can you imagine knowing that this Wolfensinger is just like the judgment of whether or not the chick you're with is attractive or not, or if you're a good dude or not? Yeah. Like, mm, y'all are mediocre, I'm not gonna show myself. Like, I'm sorry. It's like, he could be good, he could not be attractive. Which one is it? Why <laughs> didn't we see it? You'll never know. And now the couple's fighting, so now you don't even know what's gonna happen, because they're like, well, why didn't it show up? Well, it's because you're not the right one. And then she's like, well, maybe it's because I wasn't pretty, and he's got, it's a whole fight. Like, I feel like this Wolpentinger's really out here just causing tea. But if it does show up, yeah. Yeah, well, then what? Like, then then what do you do? Like, are you, like, when, when? do you have to be, like, soulmates at that point? Like, is it, like, this is it? Possibly. Because Wolpentinger apparently doesn't got one. Doesn't got a soul. Aw, that's <laughs> fucked up. Uh, you can supposedly catch a Wolpentinger by sprinkling salt on its tail. 
or by using the sack stick spade method. Would you like to take a guess on what the sack stick spade method is? No, God, please just tell me. Okay, so we're in the woods. They have the barbarian forest. You just prop open a sack with a spade. You light a candlestick inside the sack. The Wapentanger will be attracted to the light, and once he's inside the sack, you remove the spade. You catch him. I don't know. And you probably have to pour salt in its tail, I'd imagine. Salt, so, um, yeah, imagine. You would think that would catch pretty much any rabbit. I mean, yeah, you would think, like, to an extent. I seen in one of the stories I was listening to that included the Wolfentanger. It, uh, apparently it's when you shoot it, like with a gun, and blow it apart, its parts just form back together, and, re- and it doesn't regenerate, it just forms back together. So, like, if you blew, blow an arm off, it's just missing an arm. It's just still alive. I just, this creature's like, I don't know, it's just everything's so oddly specific. Like, there's no just, hey, this is how it is. It's this is how it is times a thousand. Like, there's no chill here. No, no chill at all on this creature. Okay, so kind of back in the 1800s, barbarian taxidermists, presumably for their own amusement, they began experimenting with joining together body parts from a number of different animals, and that's how stories of the Wolpentinger began. Because they were like, hey, look, we found this in the woods. I just stuffed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'd be Mm -hmm. placing these uh, wall containers all over town. Everywhere. In the bars and the... I think there's actually a museum in Bavaria now that still has some of the original ones made. Uh, Yeah, the German Hunting and Fishing Museum. Throughout the 20th century, the museum still has a permanent expedition on them nowadays. There are common sites in pubs, restaurants, and hotels across Bavaria and parts of Baden-Württemberg. So you can go see some. Authentic German Wolfentingers. I mean, let's go. Some places in the media where you can find them. RuneScape has them. Uh, World of War. War, War, War blah, 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 blah. I just love how you were like, World of War. <laughs> it was just like that deep sigh. <laughs> World of Warcraft. I was trying to say wada, wada. wow. Yeah, I was trying to say wow in World of Warcraft at the same time. It was just, wada, wada. Yeah. World of Wah? World of Wah? And some type of game called Adopt Me has them. What? <laughs> Is it like an animal game? Like Adopt Animals? Yeah, it's like uh, it's like a mix of Roblox and uh, like RuneScape, but it has I'll... little animal companions. I'll pass. And I've seen the picture of the Wolpentinger on there. You can get, it's different, got different ranks, so it changes colors, and then it's the very last color. It uh, it starts to it ears and. Some of its fur starts to give off like a rave light. Start change art, change lights and part like party lights on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's pretty much all I have on the Wolpentanger. That was our rabbit e- rabbit episode for Easter. That was would have been yesterday by the time this podcast is released. Yep, yeah, it'll be have been the day before the podcast release, and um, it was a very oddly specific, non-specific creature for your very oddly specific, non-specific holiday. I guess we shall head on with the mayhem. On to the mayhem. Yeah, yeah, let's on go. On with the mayhem. Okay, mayhem-wise, I don't know whether to rank this high or low. I think it's dependent on which animals are mixed together. Because I imagine an elephant's body, a squirrel's head, a monkey's tail, and a duck's legs would be uh, not very threatening. If you mix them together. Right, right. I mean, surprising, yes. Yes. Terrifying, maybe not. But if we have immortal, non-killable, can't go through teleporters creature that was, what, like a snake's body, cheetah's legs, crocodile maw, and harpy eagle's wings, that might cause some issues. Because it's right. be meat eater. It sounds like a fucking Five Nights at Freddy's character. Very mixed match. Yeah, I want to say Five Nights at Freddy's is kind of just, they're just humanoid, aren't they? Well, I know, but I like went straight, you were like talking about the crocodile head and stuff, and I went straight to Monty. Could you imagine Monty with like the cheetah legs and stuff? He'd be fast It'd as... be terrifying. Fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think there'd be any reasoning with it, because it'd just be animal instincts. 
I don't know if a human would count, though. I don't know. It'd be worse or better if it could mix with humans. We could get uh, cat girls, like, uh, I was going to say Steve Jobs, but that's wrong. That, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, no, one of the one of the rich people is trying to make cat people with Japan scientists. Uh, what's his name? Elon Musk. Tesla's. Uh -huh. Yeah, Elon Musk is working with scientists in Japan about making Nico cat girls a thing. Um, uh, like an actual, like an actual thing. Like we're trying to install cat ears and stuff. Yep. You know, I would lie and say I'm not tempted to have cat ears, but it would be a lie. That I would be not be like it would be badass in some ways. I don't know that I could deal with it permanently though. I don't know about that. Next I, is gonna be excited when they when they hear this podcast. Yeah, I would think it'd be handy to have like a ambidextrous tail. Yeah. How many times as I need a third hand at work? Yeah, as a mechanic, an ambidextrous tail would be handy if it had any. I guess it should have strength. Depends on which creature you get it from. Right. Right. I don't know. I feel like mayhem meter wise, like you said, it would just depend. But, like, I still feel like the mayhem, even at its, like, worst combo, would be pretty low. Yeah, because you can still capture it. It doesn't say that they're immune to being captured. Just don't just let can't it... kill. Yeah. Just don't let it bite you. You can try to harvest it for your saliva this, as hair regrowth. Or uh, pranks, maybe. Imagine someone fill a water balloon with hair regrowth and uh, wolf in your saliva and just start throwing it at people. Oh my god. That water That's the worst water balloon I ever. <laughs> yeah. Hair just everywhere. That's all for this episode. I know it was probably kind of shorter. But it was a little break it was, for the... It was like, right, it was shorter, but like it was, it was like fun information. So I feel like it'll be, we'll be yeah. set. Like I feel like it was an interesting, shorter episode. Right. And happy Easter! Or happy not... Easter, happy Othan. Oh, no. What's the other, uh, it's the pagan Easter spring festival. Spring Equinox was a while ago. Happy Spring Equinox, since we missed that, probably. Oh, you're talking about Astara? I think so. Astara? Yeah, the ritual. The spring ritual? Yeah. Any other holiday you celebrate in this time of year? Would you like to sign us out? Do what, what? <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to sign us out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 now it's just simlish. We need to stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, Anna, if you're listening to this podcast, please don't shoot me for the reference on simlish because I know you actually know how to speak it. We probably just said something offensive simlish. Join us again next Monday on Monsters, Miss, and Mayhem found on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Anchor.fm. Silver and Chaotic talk about how monsters and myths came to be and how they'd be received in modern day society. Follow, like, and subscribe to support. Also find the podcast on Twitter and Discord with the links below to keep up to date with the newest merch and activity. Besides, who knows what mayhem we will get into next. Peanut butter. Jelly touch. Fucking Jesus. <laughs> As a uh, quick reminder, we haven't said it since the first episode, we are neither experts nor professionals, but we do love to discuss. So please join us in the Discord, on Twitter, on any of either of our streams. Chaos streams a little more often than I do, but uh, we all... Love to chat and talk and welcome anybody in. Yes, absolutely. And D&D uh, &D sessions always need more for that. Get chaotic, get crazy. Ooh.